Welcome, I am Emma Davis. Let's settle for the details. The 2023 Chamber of Mines report has disclosed that $4.2 billion was repatriated to Ghana last year. The figure is a slight increase from the 2022 figure of $4.13 billion. Total revenue recorded in the period was $5.9 billion, with the small-scale mining sector recording an increase in gold production of over 70%. Here's a report on the 2023 outlook of the sector. Except for manganese, Ghana recorded an upturn in the production and exports of its traditional minerals in 2023. Gold production rose from 3.7 million ounces in 2022 to 4 million ounces in 2023. The increase was largely influenced by the growth of small-scale mining. While large-scale gold production dropped by a little over 6% to 2.9 million ounces in 2023, the small-scale subsector grew by over 70.6%. Again, mineral export receipts increased from $6.8 billion in 2022 to $7.8 billion in 2023, with gold accounting for $7.6 billion of the figure. President of the Ghana Chamber of Mines, Michael Edemakafia, spoke at the 96th Annual General Meeting of the Ghana Chamber of Mines. Ghana saw an increase in production and export of traditional minerals, except for manganese. Gold production rose from 3.7 million ounces in 2022 to 4 million ounces in 2023, which represents an 8.3% increase. In total, Mining companies repatriated $4.2 billion to Ghana, representing a slight increase from the $4.1 billion repatriated in 2022. Producing members realized $5.9 billion in mineral revenue in 2023 and repatriating $4.2 billion of that to Ghana. This included $2.7 billion, which was done through the Commercial Bank and $1.5 billion to the Bank of Ghana. On some of the challenges facing the sector, Mr. Kafia called for the review of some taxes to make the sector more attractive to foreign investment. The chamber, at least in this period, was successful in getting some successes, but we continue to call for the removal of certain unjust levies and margins, which unnecessarily inflates costs and makes us less competitive than our peers in our sub-region. On the issue of local content, Chief Executive of the Chamber, Suleiman Okone, is optimistic the operations of Petrochem Limited will be beneficial to the industry. So we are talking about not just raw salt, but how to add value to salt and what that would mean for our industry and our country. Newmont Ghana Gold Limited recorded the highest gold production, followed by Goldfields Ghana Limited, Newmont Golden Ridge Limited, and Anglo Gold Ashanti in that order. Let's stay a little longer in the mining sector as acting head of corporate and investment banking at Stambik Bank Ghana. Musa Abdullah is urging mining entrepreneurs to seek partnerships to build the capacity necessary for executing large-scale projects. Abdullah emphasized that the mining sector is highly capital intensive and requires effective financing strategies for growth. He shared these insights with Joy Business during the West African Mining and Power Expo in Accra. Access to financing is crucial for entrepreneurs in the mining and energy sectors to achieve their business goals, foster innovation, generate employment and support economic growth in the region. At the West African Mining and Power Expo, the acting head of corporate and investment banking at Stambik Bank Ghana, Musa Abdullah, encouraged entrepreneurs to focus on forming strategic partnerships to enhance the operations. It's a very heavy capital intensive area. And, and, and you will have heard me say that sometimes we need to have a right combination of capital, um, debt and equity in order to be able to drive our business forward. If you rely exclusively on debt, especially on commercial debt, it becomes very, very difficult to actually have, have low cost funding. So it's important that um, entrepreneurs try to balance 
And then also, more importantly, it's also important for entrepreneurs to seek partnerships. So if you see a contract that is too big for you, instead of drowning yourself in debt, it's important that you partner with other companies in your area to be able to execute it with patient capital. And once you do that, you realize that you build the capacity to be able to do future contracts easily. Abdullah highlighted the importance of sustainable financing in Ghana. We have to fund enterprises which also protect our environment, right? And we need to be very deliberate about it. And as a bank, we have chosen to ensure that our portfolio is um, net zero by 2050. And we are taking steps through our funding arrangements to, be, to ensure that we, we achieve a net zero impact by and 2050. And we are partnering with all clients with that same energy on sustainability to be able to drive and protect our planet. This year's conference was on the theme, Driving Sustainable Investment Opportunities in West African's Mining Sector. Now, the International Monetary Fund says Ghana is likely to receive the third tranche of $360 million by the end of this month as the country struggles to manage its falling city, which has failed to withstand the strengthening of the American dollar. In its latest press briefing on June 6, uh, the IMF indicated that its aim is to assist Ghana get board approval before the release of the fund by the end of this month. Uh, Julie Kozak, uh, the fund's director of communication, was addressing a press conference in Washington and made this known. But let's go on Zoom and speak to Professor Patrick Isuming, an economist who will help us shed more light on this and how this is going to impact on our economy. Thank you very much, Professor Isuming. Um, do you hold the view that these statements coming from the IMF gives some assurances that could help the city? Good evening and good evening to viewers. Thanks for having me. So I think we have to analyze what is the new information content in the release from the IMF. And because the market usually will, re will react when there's new information, whatever is shared. My sense is that there's been a general expectation following communication from the IMF and also from our own look at the, the Ministry of Finance that the expectation has largely been that by the end of June, you know, we would have gone through this. So these funds will come. And also, you know, we have to look at the quantum of the money we are receiving and, you know, how much of a difference it will make to our reserve position. But when you put all of that aside, there's some sense within the market that even when we receive these funds, the Bank of Ghana is restricted in its ability to intervene in the market because you know, we have to meet some reserve requirement, uh, some gross international reserve requirement and net international reserve requirement in the IMF program. So in some sense, that inhibits the ability of the central bank to intervene even when you receive these funds. So overall, I'm not sure that just this announcement is enough to make a substantial change in terms of how the city has been performing. But some analysts uh, also hold the view that the bilateral debt restructuring has taken too long. Do you think any further delays could cause more harm to the economy? Yeah, I think, you know, from where we were at the beginning of the year, we got the sense, especially in January, when the broader framework agreement was, was signed, we, we were under the impression that, you know, by now it, sh it, sh it should have been done. But, you know, these, uh, these negotiations can be very complex. We have so many different parties involved. And sometimes, you know, you, you can never predict exactly how things will go. But I think it appears that we are getting towards the end of that process. Um, the last, I think, late last month, the finance ministry announced that the government has received a draft MOU. So you get a sense that we are now nearing the process. But yes, I think it's taking a little bit longer than many would have expected at the beginning of the year. But Prof, do you think Ghana will be able to meet all the necessary requirements before the end of June? So when the IMF put out the release uh, earlier on, when the SLA was done, the, the staff level agreement, it just put one condition that we need to have an MOU with the bilateral partners. I think that's the only condition that was put there before we can go to the, the board. So 
Now that uh, it's been almost two weeks, I think, since the government received the, the draft MOU, you get a sense that we should be able to work around it very quickly so that this month we should be able to go to the fund. So I expect that we should be able to submit the SLE to the, to the board for approval. Okay, so what are your expectations for the city after the approval? I, I wouldn't expect much movement after the approval. I think, you know, we, we need some, you know, we need some, some additional thing that we haven't been expecting. I think when the finance minister spoke last time, towards the end of last month, he indicated that we are expecting some 2.3 billion. In some sense, some component of the, that money was not expected. So you expect that new kinds of new funding like that is what should move the market, not some information that we already have. So if, if there's any improvement in the fortunes of the city, I think it will be, it will be marginal. Right. So if the IMF program or the new information will not uh, majorly increase or, or affect the city, what other factors should we look at? Well, I think, I mean, where we are now, we, we, so, so in terms of dealing with the city, we, have, we need to have a, a longer term plan and we need to have a short term plan. At the moment, we can't go and uh, do any euro bond. I think there has to be some improvement in how uh, the management of the economy is going. I think for a long time, it appears that we've been in some state of a law. There's nothing really happening in terms of how we are managing the economy. So, so I think if the, we get any sense that there's some concrete plan, something new coming our way, maybe that might be enough to judge the, you know, just get some reaction from the investors. For, but until now, I think, you know, the only thing that we know is the short, the longer term solutions, you know, diversifying our exports and then cutting down our imports. That is not something we do in the short term. Mm. Right. Thank you very much, Professor Patrick Assuming, for making time on Business Life. He is an economist. Uh, let's move on to the Bank of Ghana as it is asking savings and loans companies to deepen corporate governance practices to expand their operations. According to the governor of the Central Bank, Dr. Ernest Addison, savings and loans companies should put measures in place to adapt to the new changes of the financial sector. Dr. Addison entreated the companies to collaborate and with banks and telecommunication companies for emerging technologies. Yes, more. Bank of Ghana called on the savings and loans industry to prioritize innovation, adaptation, and evolution to meet the changing needs of the sector. Dr. Addison said the central bank will continue to engage sector players in addressing challenges of the sector. The Bank of Ghana remains fully committed to its advisory role and will ensure that all financial institutions adhere to the regulatory requirements and guidelines to foster trust and confidence in the sector. The Bank of Ghana has been engaging with regulated entities regularly over governance and assurance functions in its quest to remain vigilant to ensure stability of the financial sector. Strong risk management, compliance with prudential rules, proper internal audit functions remain crucial to ensure that the regulated financial institutions operate soundly, safely, ethically, and within regulatory and legal boundaries. Chief Executive Officer of Opportunity International Savings and Loans Company, Kwame Boatin, reiterated the company's commitment to continue to comply with the regulatory framework. We are one of the few financial institutions in Ghana that combines both financial and non-financial services sustainably to create the desired client impact. Ladies and gentlemen, through our transformation agenda, we have since transformed the lives of 262 female street porters, Kayaye, and today we added another 30 in Pokwasi. These ladies used to live and labor in the markets and streets of Accra and Kumasi to make ends meet. And they've been taken through vocational skills and financial literacy training programs. And additionally, they have been provided with startup kits and capital to enable them to commence their trade. This initiative 
has not only empowered these ladies to break free from the cycle of poverty, but also contributed to the overall economic development of their communities. We were the first financial institution to introduce a dedicated loan product for the fiscally challenged in Ghana in 2013. Opportunity International Savings and Loans Company said it will continue to engage its customers. Government recorded a 19.4% oversubscription of its Treasury bills auction as demand for the short-term instruments rebounded. This was captured in the latest auction results from the Bank of Ghana. Interest rates, however, remain stable, but research lead at GCB Capital, Courage Puti, sharing his perspective, said the market is still very much liquid and expects more subscription. Compared to previous weeks, uh, we saw uh, a bit of a pickup in interest around the one and two day. And so T-bill 91 day share in the total demand came down to about 64% from the average 75, 76% levels we've seen in recent weeks. And we've seen uh, 182 day bill demand almost double from 680 million the preceding week to about um, some 1.2, uh, 1.68 billion. So more than doubled for the period. In terms of yield dynamics, 25.04 is what a 91 day printed on change from the previous week. The 182 and 60, 364 day came in at 2694, 2793, and those are two basis points higher than the previous week. Now, the general trend is showing that the rate of yield decline has largely slowed down, and it's almost reaching a stable point around the 25 to 27.9% levels. And year to date, yield compression is looking at 4.3% on a 91 day, uh, 182 day looking like 5%, and then 364, about 4.6% yield compression year to date. So, so that's how the market looked um, last week. Uh, still very much liquid. Um, the higher demand or target was supposed to, uh, the initial concern may that that may lead to under subscription and all that. But the market is still very much liquid and then I, I beat about T bills. So we've seen again over subscription to the tune of 19.4%. Uh, Watching Business Live with me, Emma Davis. We'll take a breather. We'll be back with more. Welcome to one of our headline stories. The executive director of the Africa Center for Energy Policy, Benjamin Boachi, says Ghana is gradually losing its position as a major electricity exporter in the West Sub region. Uh, in the West Africa Sub region, according to Mr. Boache, this situation will lead to revenue losses as other nations will be pushed to invest in their domestic energy generation infrastructures there by cutting off their reliance on other nations for supply. Increasingly, we are encouraging other countries to build their own solution. It may be expensive, but when they commit to it, they don't have any choice than to depend on their own generation that may be even more expensive than are importing from Ghana. The advantage Ghana had over the export market was on quality. Nigeria sells power cheaper than we do, but because we were more reliable, neighboring countries preferred power from Ghana. So one, we had to deal with that higher tariff and improve on our reliability because we weren't saints anyway. Because if Nigeria improves reliability, Liability with a cheaper tariff, they take the market. That'll be all for today's edition of Business Live. But for more news, you can log on to myjoyonline.com and we have there for you CD to end 2024 at 15 CDs, 91 pesos to a dollar. That's according to a report. And mining sector repatriated $4.2 billion to Ghana in 2023 do log on to the portal and be updated i am emma davis and thank you for your company